So this is the beginning of Unit 6. I hope to finish it up sometime next week. We'll see if that happens or not. But uh, it starts off with something titled Evaluate Nth Roots and Rational Exponents. A weird thing. Nth Roots. Nth Roots is something you're vaguely familiar with. Everybody has probably been asked to find the cubic root of something at some point in time. That's an nth root. That's the cubic root of 64, and n is 3. That's all an nth root is. An nth root is just something that looks like this. nth root of x. That's all it is. Speaking of which, what is the cubic root of 64? 4. Ideally, you know that. It's 4. So nth root is just the value that would multiply by itself n times gives you the number. I uh, did something different here. I put exponential form right there. So that roots. I did that because as you move up in the field of math, we kind of we use radicals, but not a whole lot anymore. We just kind of quit using them because exponents start to take over and they have equivalencies. Before you left for Christmas, you were you spent two days talking about how to rewrite things that were radicals as things with exponents that you grab and calculate. You remember doing that? That's most of what this lesson is going over how to rewrite things. So 16 to the 1 fourth power, you may not know what that's asking you, but some of you might do. Do you know what root it's actually asking you to take of 16? It's asking you to take the fourth root of 16. That's what it's actually asking. Now you're supposed to think of a number that will multiply by itself four times generates a 2. Try generates a 16. It goes to 2, but either way. Two. I have the next example in here for understood concepts. What root is the one-half power? Tooth root, better known as what? Square root. Sadly, nobody says second root. I don't know why. The two, I'll put in a little different color here. Is understood. It's usually not mentioned. It's just understood to be there. It's like everything has an understood exponent of what? What? There's just things out there that are understood. So what is the square of second root of 36? It's six. So we know that. And the roots are not actually anything new. It's just kind of a definition that might be a little bit new. Uh, here's where we're talking about even roots and odd roots in relation to shift to when you solve for x. The big deal here is what we write here is about when solving for x. So the fourth root is 16. Is that an even root or an odd root? Even. Four is even, kids. Besides 2, what else multiplied by itself four times in generate 16? When you're talking about something like this, x to the fourth is 16. So x is the fourth root of 16. The answer here is actually plus or minus 2. Because a negative times a negative, four times is going to create a what? Positive. All right? Even roots always have two answers. Always. There's no exception to rule. They always have two unique answers. An example of using odd end roots would be to say do something like x to the fifth. X to the fifth is 32. What's the opposite of the fifth power as far as the radicals are concerned? The fifth root. You would, there's two ways of doing this. I'll teach you exponents in a minute. In a minute. But you take the fifth root. And there's only one way to get 32 when you multiply something together five times. 
It's still two, isn't it? Does a negative two work? No, only the positive works. All odd roots have only one unique solution. You just have to remember that a lot of you guys, most of you, even those of you that are average, are going to be pushing a lot of buttons. And Kepler doesn't always tell you the truth. Now you type root 64 in Kepler, does it say plus or minus 8? No, you have to know about that, don't you? And you still have to be familiar with that. And it gets even worse here because you're going to start dealing with fractional exponents. You're not even going to realize what root you're taking half the time. So you've got to kind of be aware and you've got to be on the lookout for that. That's slide one of 14. Slide two. The x to the p over r rule. What's the p stand for? Power. Oh, I'll just write that out. This is x to the power. What's the r stand for? Root. Power over root. How do you rewrite something in the form x to the p over r as a radical? Not what that is. Radical. Come on. It's going to be a radical x. P stands for power. R stands for what? Root. You can just go back and look at the roots I've done. I always put whatever root it was as a little number in front of that. Not quite an exponent. I'm not actually sure what you call it. Or there's another way of doing this, which shows up a lot of times when you're doing things by hand. Still out of the R in the same place. But you save the power for later. Not a big deal when you're just pushing money to count it. You're trying to do something by hand. First, the next two slides are basically just going over the conversion process, being able to go to convert from exponential to two radicals and vice versa. Mm -hmm. Then we'll start doing a little work with them. So this is convert from rational exponential form to a radical form. So when I look at the exponent, I'm supposed to be able to pick out the power and the root. So this is six to the two-thirds. What's the power? Power is two. Powers are up high. And what's the root? Three. Just use this thing right here. That's all you do. Nothing more. So what little number is going to be in front of radical? Three. And what are you going to do with your six? Square. It's a simple rule. Anybody have any questions with it? What's the difference between B and C? One has princes. One of them says all of 5x to the 5/6. One of them says 5 times x to the 5/6. All right, so all of 5x to the 5/6. What's the root? 6. Root 6. 5x. What's the power? Is what I wrote correct? Why not? Both to the fifth. I'm glad you see that. Both pieces have to be the fifth power, right? It's all drop the princess for no reason. They're for the reason. So I don't know if you did it on your notes, but I just did it on the board. I put the understood multiplication symbol in between the 5 and the x. That's how you're supposed to read it. I only say 5x, but we're supposed to understand it's 5 times x. So whatever I write is going to be five times something, correct? <coughs> five times what? Six root x to the fifth. Am I going to use those examples? Questions. I've done three questions in a row now. Nobody wants to ask anything. I would take a dumb question right now. Yeah. Dumb questions should be asked, even if they are a little bit funny. But you just didn't know, right? They should be asked. I might laugh at you, but I will help you. 
try to do this. All right, the other way around, converting from radical to rational. Same rule. Just read the rule from right to left. I'll write the rule down again so we got it right up here in front of the board and we can see it. Rule is x to the p over r is the rth root of x to the p. Milo, can you write a for us? Or the five thirds, that's right. Usually, it just depends on who's typing it, but usually what's high stays high. Isn't five just a little bit higher than the three? It just depends on how it's typed and how it's written. Usually what's high stays high. How's that help you or not? Sometimes <coughs> it doesn't quite look that way when it's typed. But it usually does. Let's go with Harley. Harley rewrite B for us. Good with that. Anybody any questions from Milo or Harley? Well, in there. Here's examples of evaluation. I'm a little old school. I like to do things by hand. And I think if, if you guys will understand how things look as radicals, it will greatly help you understand what's actually going on. 16 to 3 halves. Rewrite that as a radical. Anybody just volunteer it to me. Or don't volunteer. If you like the Russians and I can conscript, just send you to your death. If you're watching the Ukraine war, what root are you going to take that 16? The square root? You have to put the thing over. No, it's understood. And you can put it there if you want. There's absolutely nothing wrong with putting it there, is there? Nothing. Nothing wrong with it at all. I just, I can't do it every time because you need to know. What are you going to do to that thing? So the real question is, do you want the cube there? Or do you want the cube somewhere else? Which one do you think is easier to do by hand? I'll do the right one. For starters, I don't even know what 60 cube is. Much less do I want to take the square root of it. Does that make any sense? I do, however, know what the square root of 16 is. What is she? She's 4. And it turns out that I can turn around and cube that pretty easy because I memorized my cubes a long time ago. 4 cubed, 64. By the way, the calculator would agree with us. 16, rooftop, 3 over 2, 64. Now, the reason I, I talk about doing some things by hand is because if I was solving for x, as soon as I saw that square root symbol, I would remember plus or minus. I might not necessarily remember that when I'm dealing with x points. That's kind of why I mentioned it. All right, evaluate 32 to the negative 3 fifths power. What do you know what's funny about that thing? Mm -hmm. Negative exponent. So you've got a rule that talks about x to the negative n. How do you write x to the negative n? This is why I want to get form. Over x to well, I want to get form because it's every week. <coughs> I just don't want to spend that much time writing. Well, over x to the n. Use that rule first. Anytime you see a negative x form, fix the problem. Before you do anything else, fix it. Rewrite it. The exponent positive. What do you have? Now let's try to keep evaluating by hand. Convert from the exponential notation to the right. What root? The fifth root of 32 to what power? Where do you want to put that through? Inside or outside? Okay. Yeah. I hope you understand that. I know a lot of you don't even know what fifth root of 32 is. But the fifth root of 32 cubed is going to be a lot worse. Once you're like, I have a calculator, right? I don't know what this thing's. 
Fifth root of 32 is a 2. Once you cube it, you get an 8. I'm pretty sure I asked you on that homework assignment to do some of this stuff by hand. And if you're curious if you got it right or not, you can just type in the original expression. The original expression was uh, 32 to the negative 3 fifths power. 125 back as a fraction. He's right. Which, wish, right? I do too. By the way, 9 is negative 1 half power. Got the same issue as we did. What's the issue? So rewrite. 1 over 1. And I would love to skip steps, but I can't. I'm not saying you can't. What do you know about that half power now? What do you know about the half power? The square root. The half power every time you see it is a square root. That's all it is. <coughs> They'll put this on the EOC and 80% of the student body in Tennessee are missing. So one over the square root or nine. And I'm not going to put the understood two there, partner. Just not going to do it. What's the root of nine? Three. Third. Everything's said and done. One over three. All right, so. I've done all this by hand, which I know is not that interesting to y'all. What is interesting to y'all is how to use a calculator. Because that's what matters most to you. Evaluate using a calculator. Anyone on your keypad, you see a cubic root function on your keypad. You see a little square root symbol with a 3 next to it. Yes or no? No. This is not there. That's why you learn how to convert to exponents. And you should push buttons, by the way, when we're ready to push buttons. Because what's going to happen is come test day, you can spend 10 seconds looking at the root doctor because you don't play along. I didn't finish. You didn't finish because you don't care. I didn't give you anything that was too hard. So, rewrite cubic root negative 30 all squared with a fractional exponent. What's it look like? Negative 30 over 3. What is it? Uh, I'll play along. Rooftop key is right above the divisor key. Now, what if I told you you're dead wrong? Because you are. What's the power? Look at the exponent. What's the power? <coughs> Two. Anytime you square a negative, what's your result? Positive. That's old stuff, isn't it? You know why your calculator gave you the wrong answer? You didn't. You told it the wrong thing, kids. What's that, Milo? No. All of this has an exponent of two thirds, not just part of it. When you wrote negative 30 to two thirds, you forgot about the negativity. Commandment number nine. Negative 30 is technically a negative one times positive 30. It's technically two things. The negative symbol is something, and then there's the number. You have to wrap before you evaluate. I hope you remember that. There's the right answer. Probably 9.65 or so. Again, make sure you know what the rooftop key is. Make sure you don't type in a fraction. I know it seems simple, but you know, I've done this for a long time. Simple things. Kids don't play along. They don't remember them. So hopefully you understand here why. Is everybody good at why you had to have the parentheses? For one, it's wrong. But if you don't include them, you're forgetting about raising that negative one to the two-thirds power. That was the issue. All right, I think we got some solving going up. Oh, one half x to the fifth is five twelve. You're probably sitting there all worried about x to the fifth instead of what you should be worried about, which is the first thing in front of you. 
What's the first thing in front of you that you know how to fix? I wouldn't divide. You can. You can divide both sides by half. Multiply by two. Not at all what you're doing. But you're not going to go to college and see if a college professor divides by a fraction. They're just going to fix the fraction. If they are teaching dividing by half, they shouldn't be teaching this stuff. The opposite of having something is double both sides. Because if you divide by half, it turns out you're really doing one. Multiply by two. That makes sense. You just jump straight to it. Cancellation. You got x to the fifth is 1024. <coughs> and the problem here is that you have x to the fifth. You might know how you fix x to the fifth, how you do the opposite, how you counteract it. I'll take the fifth root. I'm, I'm good with that, but I don't want to use rational actually. What Bella said is take the fifth root, and she's 100% right. I just don't want to do it with radicals. Okay, fair enough. Opposite power. Oh, and maybe this is what you meant, Bella, but I was hoping you'd say a little different. It's always the reciprocal power. The opposite power is always the reciprocal power. Like I said, there's nothing wrong with what you said. I just want to do this with exponents. I don't want to do it with radicals. There's a reason for that. So, what's the reciprocal of five? One fifth. Now, after you write it, hopefully you'll understand why this works. So you take x to the fifth, you raise it to the one fifth, and because you did the one fifth power on both sides, you got to do it on one side, sorry, you got to do it on the other side. So what happens there on the right left hand side where we have x to the fifth raised to the one fifth? We say they cancel. The reality is you multiply them together. Five times the fifth is what? One. one. You get x to the first power. And cancellation works too. I mean, you cancel, what are you left with? A one, right? But an x to the understood one is now <coughs> 1024 to the one fifth power. And that is asking what the fifth root of 1024 is. I don't expect you to know it. I don't. You got TI 84 in front of you. You say it's four three. You know, push the buttons, okay? So, 10 to 4, rooftop 1 over 5, 4. Knows how long it took me to push buttons? Doesn't take that long if you play with the calculator for a while. 4. Uh, something else we need to look at. We are in a section here in your notes where we're solving for x, aren't we? So from the beginning of your notes, there was two things talking about evens and odds. Even roots. How many answers? Two. Odd roots. How many answers? One. Did you do an even or an odd root? You did odd. I wish everybody understood that. But you were using this funky notation, x to the p over r, weren't you? The root is the denominator of the fraction. So that right there tells me I have an odd root. So I'm good with what the calculator told me. All right, moving on to b. x plus 5 all to the fourth is 16. Don't be the kid who takes away 5. Please don't be that kid. <coughs> Too early for that, isn't it? Before you have access to that five inside, what do you got to fix? You got to handle that fourth power. What's the opposite of the fourth power? The reciprocal. You take x plus five to the fourth, and then you turn around and you raise it to the one quarter. Okay. 
It's actually pretty easy to do. What happens on the left hand side when you multiply that four and that quarter together? It becomes one, annihilates itself. X plus five is, and you may as well figure out what 16 and one quarter is if you don't know it. You don't know what it is. Pay attention to what this thing tells you. Some of them, if you turn them on, they say F no graph, don't pay any attention to that one. Pay attention to that. Four through 16 is what? Two. Again, this something has to be on the back of your mind when you're doing this. The route that you took. That has to be on your mind. The 4 through the 16 is not just 2. What else is it? It's negative 2. You took an even route. That's even. Not what I wanted. Because of that, you introduce the plus or minus symbol. Because a negative two times a negative two times a negative two times a negative two is still going to be positive six times. And now it's something we've been doing forever. We can take away from both sides. Five. So x is going to be a negative five plus or a minus a two. And what are your x values? Negative seven. Negative seven. What else, Kaylee? Yes, ma'am. I've done this for a long time. Come test day, 60% of student body misses because they forget about the two answers. That's just based on prior experience. That means it's probably going to be true this year. It's easy to forget about that, isn't it? If you just push in buttons on the calculator and it tells you four, that's what you're going to put down. You're not going to remember if you're supposed to do a plus or minus. What aggravates me though, is that you could just look at a graph. <clears throat> you could literally put the left hand side in the y1 and the right hand side where? Y2. And there would be two intersections. All right, last one on this little page. X to the two thirds plus 40 is 56. Easy things first. What's easy? Something got to be easy. Track 40, if you subtract 40 from 56, what do you got? 16. Reagent, do you know what the opposite of the three halves power is? Which is? I said that entirely wrong, didn't I? I gave her the yes. But you're right, the reciprocal of two thirds is three halves. That was me that screwed that all up. So we'll take. Two thirds, next to the two thirds, we raise it to the three halves. So if we do it to the left, we have best do it to the right. If you do the left hand side, that math, two thirds times three halves, what do you get? You get one. And if you don't know what 16 and three halves is, because this is new stuff to you, and you push your buttons, it's going to tell you something, isn't it? What's it going to tell you? It'll tell you 64. Is that your answer? Why plus or minus? Uh, I noticed a lot of y'all didn't push the buttons. Do not complain about how hard this class is when you don't even push the buttons. That's an even root. It has two answers. As soon as you start evaluating exponents, you have to decide whether you need the plus or minus symbol. You need it. Got a positive 64 negative 64. I'd love to tell you we're done with the day, but we're not. It sucks for you. So it's 6 2. Applying rules of rational exponents, applying the properties of them. So here's seven of the, I don't know how many exponential rules there are 9, 10, 12. There's seven of them. I know they're the ones I thought was important. First off, x to the a times x to the b, what is it? Rope. x to the a plus b. x to the a plus b. You know that. 
somebody asked you what x squared times x to the fifth is, you don't tell them x to the tenth, do you? Don't you tell them x to the seventh? Because you do what with the exponential space? You add it. How about x to the a raised to the b? Yes, yeah, so we just did that three times in a row. We just did this rule three times in a row. I never mentioned it. If you have no idea what I'm talking about, <coughs> we did it here. We did it here. We did it here. What do we do with those exponents? We multiply them together, didn't they? To become the one we needed, right? We just did that rule. How about the quantity a times b raised to the x? a to the x, b to the x. That one's a little bit different than I taught you. These are old notes from 14 to 15. x to the negative a. 1 over x to the a. Sometime around 2017 or 2018, I quit using A's and B's here. I changed that one to X to P over R. Because it just made more sense to use the letters P and R. Why does it make more sense to use the letters P and R? Power of root. Okay. So how do you rewrite X raised to the power divided by the root? We've been doing this. Rth root, or the or. I, I, I got you. And the last one is a fractional form of a times b of the x. Here we just did a times b all of the x. This is just a fraction form of a. A, will you please say A raised or A2? You guys say AX. A to the if you tell somebody AX, let me know right. A. Say 2. A to the X over B to the X. I'm not adopting that. It. It's just, I had a thousand kids say that <laughs> in my career. God, I'm not really at this point in my life. Stop saying that. Those are the rules. Apparently, the ones I thought that was more important. That's like when your two or three year old learns the question, why? You just quit being curious. You'll know that being a little siblings. My two year old asked why. I don't know, it was probably four or five months ago, and I ain't going. But again, that's it's been great. My, my oldest. As soon as he said why, I answered him. And guess what I've had to do? I'd answer every single question that he ever asked. It starts with why. It's finally getting away from that. Now here's an extension of an old rule. This is the nth root of a times b is the nth root of a times the nth root of b. We talked about this a while ago. We had it just like this with square root symbols. It's just an extension into the nth root idea where it's a 3 or a 4 or a 12. That's all it is. So you're already familiar with this rule. You're mostly familiar with this rule when somebody asks you to simplify a radical. Like if you have the root of 32, and most teachers actually do it a little bit different than the way the rule is actually shown. If somebody asks you to simplify root 32, what do you think about? You're technically supposed to think about the root of 16 times the root of 2. And I've thought about teaching it. It's broken apart radicals for a long time. I just never have. What's the root of 16? Mm -hmm. You've you learned these rules through radical simplification. I hope you see that. <coughs> radical simplification is the application of the rules. And we just take that rule and we skip steps to different, five different roots. So here we have 4 through 27 times 4 through 3. There isn't a person alive or there will ever be alive that has any idea what the 4 through 27 is. They might know it out of five, six decimal places. Maybe farther, there's some weird people out there. But it's irrational. It's a decimal that never stops, never repeats. And there isn't a person that will ever exist that will actually know the 4 through 3. Same reason. 
it's a decimal that never stops or repeats. It has no pattern. But what's kind of interesting here is what happens when you put them together. Take two things that never stop, never repeat, and put them together. That rule, if you read it from right to left, says you can multiply two distinct radicals and join them together as one. And if you take a 27 and 3 and you put them together, what do you get? 81. Well, huh, that's doable. You might know what 4 through 81 is? It's 3. It's 3. Now, I'm not knocking you if you're incapable of doing that, because I've done this for so long that I realized some kids just couldn't do it. That's why we teach the conversion exponential form. If you have no idea what the 4 through 81 is, how do you push buttons, how do you push buttons in the calculator? Because you don't have a 4 through key. How do you push the buttons in the calculator? 81 to the 1 fourth. That's for you, okay? If you didn't know what it was, that's how you figure it out. Take 81 and you raise it to that 1 fourth power. I have no idea what I just typed in there, but it wasn't what I wanted. Three. So if you can't do it, in your head, you're going to have to figure out the rule. That's simple. All right, we also have the same kind of property based on division. I've done it numerous times in here. You take a radical and you break it into two parts. It still works. And if it works from left to right, the rule works from right to left. So if I have the cubic root of 250 over the cubic root of 2, which I don't know what either one of those are, I can put them together. I can think of as a singular cubic root that contains a 250 over a 2. I'm not going to lie, I don't write that down when I do this myself. But you guys need to see what's going on in my head. And then I can figure out what 250 over 2 is. What is it? 125. That is something that everybody that takes me should be able to know. Because I have asked you to memorize your cubes. What is the cubic root of 125? 5. Now, if you're part of that 10 or 15 kids I have that refuse to memorize your cubes, how do you use your calculator? What do you raise 125 to? 1 third. On the top one, the plus or minus 3. Are you solving for x? Which is 3. That's just 3. The only time you worry about the positive or negativity of an answer is when you're solving for another one. And the reality is, negative numbers just aren't that common. I cannot think of a whole lot of things in my life that I've ever experienced a negative number. I'm fortunate enough it's never been a bank account issue, which a lot of people have. That's where most people experience their first real application of negative numbers. You're not broke, <laughs> you're less than broke. You know, just not a whole lot of negativity, negative numbers in this world. You can talk about things like losing weight. You know, like I'd hope to lose 20 pounds, but still over zero. And it's rare in Tennessee. It's rare. This is the funnest part of these notes. You catch my sarcasm? This is the favorite. I love this stuff. I like numbers. You guys probably won't like this stuff. You're asked to simplify the cubic root of 130. So if somebody asks me about a cubic root, what I like to do is I like to think about some cubes. <coughs> well, I know. I know one cube is one. I know two cubed is eight. I know three cubed is 27. I know the four cubed is 64. I know the five cubed is 125. Even though I don't need it, I know that six cubed is 216. When I've been asking you to find to simplify square roots, the goal is to then find factors, one of which you can take a square root of, right? Now the goal is to find factors, one of which you can take the cubic root of. So I just made a small list there. Which of those numbers might be factors of 135? 27. How many times 27 are? That's right, 5. So what you do is you view this as the cubic root of 27 times 5. 
And that is something you can do. You can simplify it, make it look just a little bit more exact. What is it? It's three cubic roots of five. Now you'll notice when somebody gives me a radical, I'll leave an answer as a radical. That's just the way it is. You could write three, five, and one third if you want. But just leave it as a radical. It could be kind of a new. What? Yeah. If I wrote three times five and one third? If I was working with X's and stuff like that. If you're raising the three to the, to the, like, to the third, you probably would just put parentheses. Yeah, I would. Yeah. Oh, you, so that. Yeah. I see what you're saying. You, some kids will see that as three cubed times the square root of five. Good. Hopefully you understand what's going on. What's the problem with B? I didn't teach you beyond that. I didn't teach you trig. I don't know how your trig teacher was about certain things. But this is usually kids' first real experience. Of you get a taste of it in algebra one. I don't know why. Actually, I don't even need it. That's what we said. Just leave that set off. What's the sign of angle A? Well, you all made A's last year. What's the sign of angle A? Three over three. Did Miss Cantrell let you leave answers like that? Did she let you leave answers like that? The answer to that should be enough. I don't know that it was. Yeah, I think so. I think you did. Yeah, I think you did. No. I bet you claimed the number. Well, you, that's still kind of young. Well, anyways, a long, long time ago, some virgin who was responsible for a crap load of the math that was passed on down to your generation decided no radicals in the denominator. And he has ruined math for so many kids. I don't know if that was his goal or not. Somebody said no radicals in the denominator. I have no idea if it was a virgin or not. I just say that to help you remember it. No radicals in the denominator. That's the issue with this problem. That is the that is the issue with it. Because what do you see in the denominator? You see figure eight, a radical by definition. Anybody have any idea how you might fix that? And if you multiply it by the fifth root of eight, you'd have the fifth root of eight squared. Not a horrible idea. It's actually a good start. It's actually a very good idea. I agree with the fifth root part. So, what did you say? I just said, So, here's your question. What is the fifth root of 8 to the fifth? It's not 1, it's just 8. It would be really nice if I could multiply the bottom of that fraction by something that would give me the fifth root of 8 to the fifth. So what can I multiply the fifth root of eight, which by the way is to the first, by to become the fifth root of eight to the fifth? She even said something. She mentioned the fifth root, but she just had fifth root of eight. It's fifth root of eight to some power. The fourth. 
Because if you take a to the first and you multiply by a to the fourth, you get a to the fifth, right? And now I have in the denominator the fifth root of a to the fifth, which Alex told us was eight, because the root and the power annihilate each other. So that was kind of basically the algebra two part of this question. The rest of it is to some degree earlier on. If you multiply the bottom by the fifth root of eight to the fourth, I guess we'll do it to the top tomorrow. I hope you love that lesson. <laughs> <laughs>